Welcome back. I'm Shane and this is Relative Time. Now 2020 has been a heck of a year and unfortunately for a lot of people Halloween is going to be cancelled. Even if you incorporate an N95 in your costume it's just not a good idea right now. However what is a good idea is Lumaween. So I'm back with the second annual Lumaween special. And if you happen to have missed last year's I'll have a link down below. But this is the time of year where I look back at all the watches I've reviewed and pick out the best when it comes to Loom. So if you're a Loom nut or just love Loom time lapses, this is the top 5 video for you. Now just like last year, intensity and longevity are the key factors when I rank these. But design and how the Loom is incorporated into that design also plays an important role as well. And this is key for number 5 on this list, and that's the Ryza Resolute. Now this is one I just reviewed, and it's the only watch on this list that isn't a diver. Over the last year, there have been a handful of non-divers that really stood out when it came to Loom. And other than the Ryza, the other two were both Seikos, which would be the new 2020 Ghost Alpinist and the new 40mm Seiko 5 that I nicknamed the Silver Shadow which I think is the SRP61. They're both really good and almost diver good, and that's sort of expected when you're looking at a Seiko. Now the Resolute's Loom is a little bit stronger than those, and lasts just a tad bit longer than a Seiko Turtle. But with it, it's not just about intensity and longevity. Where the Resolute really shines is in its design, as it has a great utilization of both green C3 and blue BGW9 Loom. The blue chapter ring fades out before too long, but the second hand and the tips of those cardinal indices last long into the night with the rest of the watch. It's a great sports watch and one that is worth checking out. Next we have a watch that I reviewed just after last year's Lumaween, so this is one that's been stuck on my mind for an entire year. Now last year the watches that really impressed me the most were all from microbrands as they seem to be the ones who really wanted to go above and beyond the standards for Loom. So this is one that really surprised me, because it's just a mid-range diver from Orient. Although it's not just any mid-range diver. So at number 4 we have the Orient Triton, or Orient Neptune depending on who you're talking to. The best way to think of the Triton is that it's sort of a super SKX. It's a little bit bigger than that, but it's still ISO rated and has a sapphire crystal. You also have a power reserve indicator, and that's pretty uncommon for a watch at this price. Although what it really shares with the SKX is more of that quintessential tool watch look. One that's more about substance and less about flash. The Triton also has a ton of loom. Now the design isn't overly creative, and I would have loved for some more loom on that bezel but it's bright and extremely long lasting, where it was almost able to keep up with the best watch from last year, and that was the Phoebus Great Wall. So it's definitely one that will last through the night. And as a side note, and this is something I mentioned in a previous video, is that I have heard rumors that the Triton is being discontinued, or already has. So if it's one you've been considering, you might want to jump on that sooner than later. So coming in at number 3 we have the Zelos Horizons GMT, and to be more specific, the fully loomed Frost version. Now I've looked at a few other fully loomed watches, and they're all awesome in their own way, but this is really the first time I've seen one that can go the distance. The loom dial eventually fades out, but it takes a while, and even after that the hands and the indices keep on going into the night. Even in daylight it's pretty awesome to look at, with just a ton of contrast for usability. Which surprisingly translates over into the darkness. And that's thanks to a great design that utilizes both blue and green loom. It's really an awesome watch, and the only thing I can think that they could have done better was to have a loom to date wheel. Now number 3 here was almost a tie. Along with the Horizons GMT, I also had the Zelos Mako 3 and the Axios flagship. And that's not really surprising considering they're all related. But I really wanted to keep this as a top 5 list, and I thought the fully loomed Horizons gave it a little bit of an edge. Yet I still want to mention those other watches because they're both great. The Mako is a bit more casual, 
while the flagship is a little bit more dressy, and maybe a little retro. But they're both long-lasting, and they both have an excellent dual-color design. If there's a common theme to the Lumiween watches of 2020, it's that they all surprised me in some fashion. This is especially true of the Orient Triton, as well as the top two watches on this list. So, coming in at number two, we have the Kronos 62 Moss Homage. Now, if you never caught the review, Kronos is a newer AliExpress brand. Now, Chinese watches have a bad reputation when it comes to Loom, and most of the ones I've seen deserve that reputation. But I've run across a few brands that have really good Loom, the most prominent of which is San Martin. But this one, the Kronos, it really blew me away. And especially so from a $200 watch from a brand I've never heard of. Even before you get to the Loom, this is just a gorgeous bronze watch with a striking green dial. And as a whole, almost every aspect of this watch is one they got right. It's really one of those watches where you start to question why Seiko's cost so much. It really did impress me, and that's especially true of the Loom. Even in daylight, the hands here have a faint green glow, and that pairs nicely with the emerald dial. But at night? At night, this thing goes the distance, far outlasting a Seiko turtle and almost keeping up with the King of Loom, the Phoebus Great Wall. When I first got it, I was expecting it to be good, but never this good. So if you're a fan of Chinese watches, and especially bronze ones, this is definitely one to check out. So before we get to number one on the list, I have a few honorable mentions. Up first, we have a Phoebus Proteus, and I'll include both the original white dial and the new age steel version. It's a pretty interesting and cool design, if not a bit different, and I particularly like the age steel version. Now, in terms of loom, they both lack longevity, and that's especially true of that aged steel version thanks to the old radium loom color they used, as it just doesn't have the staying power of C3 or BGW9. But what it lacks in longevity, it more than makes up for in creativity, with just a cool two-tone design. Although I should point out that it looks pretty similar to a Zello Swordfish, so cool, but maybe not original. The second honorable mention here isn't so much a watch, but an interesting mod project brought to life. And that's the Firefly Watchworks Fully Loom Dial. There are a lot of aftermarket dials out there for modders, but this is one of the few fully loomed ones I've run across. Now it could definitely use some more loom, but it's still a cool option for modders wanting to do something creative. And after I did do a video on it, they sent me my own dial to play with but I haven't quite stuck it in anything yet. And along those same lines, I've also run across a fully loomed Vostok Scuba Dude dial on eBay. And I couldn't help myself and I picked one up, but I still haven't done anything with that one either. Anyway, let's move on to the top dog, number one loom of 2020. And this is also one of my favorites from this year, and that's the Orient Star Diver. And since this is part of the Orient Star line, this is a step up from the Triton, just in terms of fit, finish, movement, and unfortunately, a step up in price. Now, as much as I like the Triton, I flat out love this watch. It's just very different and very unique. Generally, I'm not a Pepsi guy, unless you count Mountain Dew, but there's something about the Pepsi bezel here and how it combines with the sunburst blue and it's just enthralling to look at. I especially love the semi-skeletonized hands, and I love watching them sweep around the dial. But this is another watch that really surprised me. It arrived right before I took off to visit family for a few weeks, and during that time I did wear it a bit, but I didn't get around to really testing it till I got home. Now I had a feeling that the loom was pretty good, but I was thinking it was more like Orient Kamasu good. So it wasn't until I got home that I really put it to the test, and I tested it multiple times just to confirm. Not only does the Orient Star far outpace its Seiko Turtle cousin, but this is the first watch I've run into that really gives the Phoebus Great Wall a run for its money. For the most part, I would say it's a tie between the two. The hands are about the same, but the dial is stronger on the Orient. So there is some give and take here. But either way, it's an absolutely fantastic watch with fantastic loom. 
something a lot of people wouldn't have expected from Orient. Well, that about wraps it up for Lumoween 2020. Thanks for joining me, and if you can think of any good contenders for Lumoween 2021, I'd love to know that down below. And especially if you can think of something that would give the Great Wall or the Orient Star a run for its money. Otherwise, I hope you all enjoyed yourselves, and you all know what to do down below. So, until next time.